Gold and platinum prices plummeted to record lows this week. David Jolie, he's a strategic analyst at Mutsui Precious Metals, joins Piru and myself from London. Uh, David, thanks for your time. We did see the gold price, and uh, we'll talk about both you know, gold and platinum, but uh, that also has definitely taken a hammering. A lot of analysts saying that it really is got to do with the Fed. We should be blaming this hiking interest rate cycle. And I'm going to try and repeat the question to you once again in case you didn't get me there, David. Uh, just talking about the Thank record, you. the low prices that we have seen in terms of gold and platinum. Um, just want to ask you if the, the analyst reports in terms of uh, the fact that we are seeing this interest rate or the, 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 the rate in interest rates coming through from the U.S. Fed uh, is to blame for what we're currently seeing at the moment. I think it's one of the major factors out there. There are a lot of things that are going on in the market all the time, but that's something the market's focused on for a very long period now, for probably about a year or so. And I think the expectation of rising rates just puts a little bit of pressure on commodities in general. I think the relatively good performance of equities in certainly the US has also put pressure on commodities as well. But alongside that, you have concerns over China and certainly in, in platinum, to an extent gold, I think you have some concerns about uh, demand as well. So there are other issues there that are uh, having that impact, not just the uh, interest rate question. David, Piruya, I just want to ask you something. Obviously, we've seen the, the announcement from the Chinese on Friday with, with their gold reserves declining more than uh, analysts were expecting. Are, are we seeing that as a driving force in, in the declining gold price? And obviously, obviously coupled with with the interest rate hike and no yield in gold, uh, how low can this gold price go? Well, I'll sort of treat those two questions separately. The, the first one, the Chinese announcement about the increase in their um, gold reserves was, I think, fairly well expected, but the number was maybe a little lower than people thought. Personally, I would say you have to take it with a pinch of salt. The, the numbers definitely mean something, and they're probably correct. But they mean exactly what they mean, no more, no less, really. They, uh, there may be other metal that isn't in the form of reserves. And I would say the, the real message is that the Chinese are buying both as a country um, and as individuals as well. So there's still demand out there. It's just not maybe as strong as it could be. I think the question of where the price goes, certainly sentiment at the moment is rather weak. And you know, as we come down towards 1100 with platinum below $1,000, then we start having people talking about $1,000 as a target for gold. Um, personally, I would look at it and say, I think that's, that's, that could certainly happen. We could, we could go that far and we could go further. There's no underlying reason, uh, production costs or anything else, that says to me that we shouldn't go below those levels. But I still see reasons to be, I think, modestly bullish in the medium term and in the longer term, where we think about the potential for inflation in the US, for instance, uh, over the long term as a result of QE, where we think about um, expansion of uh, the middle classes in China and in India as well. So we're seeing, I think, still prospects for strong gold buying and strong platinum buying as well. So you can see positive reasons in the medium term, but I think in the short term those, those factors don't necessarily matter. In the short term sentiment matters more and that could take us lower uh, before we see any fundamentals helping us. Yeah. David, uh, let's talk about platinum and then look at just how important China has been as a market there. Uh, just to look at the car market, VW spoke about the fact that this is the first time in 10 years that they have seen a decline in their sales. Um, how much of a driver is this going to be in the price of platinum going forward? Well, I, it's interesting. I think the Chinese market, the Chinese automotive market, doesn't have a lot of relevance for platinum, actually. It's more a palladium market. But China as a, as a whole is important, um, and particularly for the jewellery sector, but other industrial demand as well. And there's no doubt that, that the economy there is growing. It's going to continue to grow. But sentiment is pretty, pretty weak. Um, and there are other issues weighing on platinum as well. So things like the... Um, the government's anti-corruption drivers just made people a little bit less keen to spend on visible signs of wealth, whether that's jewellery, um, high-end cars, um, luxury luggage, things like that. So that certainly has weighed on the market. But I think what we're seeing is a combination of a market that's a little bit slow and sentiment which is weak as well. So people worrying in the market about 
um, about the European automotive sector, which is actually doing all right, but because Europe's doing badly, people are worried about that and, and translating that into something that they expect to see weak platinum prices. So I think you're having two different impacts. One is the, the actual impact of demand, and then the second one is this perception of weak demand, which is not quite true. David, thanks so much for just uh, giving us uh, an overview of the dynamics that are definitely pushing the prices of those preci precious metals down. That was David Jolie. He's a strategic analyst at Mutsui Precious Metals.